In this video, I'm going to show you how to build this really cool responsive grid layout using the new QuickStack element that has been added to Webflow quite recently. QuickStack is based on the grid element, but it allows you to build these layouts a lot faster and a lot more efficient, and it's also much easier to do. So let's start building this, and I'm going to show you everything that you need to know about QuickStack along the way. So right here I have a Webflow project that is almost completely empty. I only have my main wrapper here. And inside of the main wrapper I'm going to add the quick stack by pressing Ctrl E or Command E on Mac to open the quick finder. And then I type out the name of the element. In this case the element's name is quick stack. Then I hit enter and now the quick stack is added to the page. Whenever you add a quick stack element to the page you get presented with this presets window right here where you can choose a predefined layout. You don't have to worry about that too much. It is not like a final decision. Anything that you configure here can be changed later on. So just choose a preset that is closest to the layout that you actually want to achieve. I'm going to go with this one, this two by two uh, grid, and then close the presets panel. First of all, I would like to add a class to this quick stack. You can add classes to quick stacks like to any other element. And I'm going to give it a class of hero underscore stack because that's going to be the hero section. And then I set the height of that quick stack element to 100 view height so that it always uh, covers the entire screen. The way you can control this quick stack element is by clicking on this layouts panel right here. And here you can basically configure the columns and the rows of the quick stack grid. So if I click on plus, then a new column is added. If I click on plus here at the rows, a new row is added. And I can also remove uh, rows and remove columns. Now, something really interesting happens uh, with a quick stack element if you remove or add a column or a row. If I add a row right here and you look at the navigator, you can see new cells get added to the element, like right here. And if I remove a row or a column, uh, the cells get removed again. So the big question is, what is a cell when it comes to QuickStack? A cell is basically just an element that you can style, you can put other elements inside of it, it behaves mostly like a normal Webflow element, except for one single fact, and that is you cannot delete the cells. When you remove a column, all of the cells of that column get removed as well. If you add a column, new cells get added to the quick stack so that they cover the entire element. And that is uh, quite a large difference from quick stack to CSS grid. In CSS grid, if you create these rows and columns, there are no actual elements inside of them. The rows and columns inside of CSS grid are only guidelines and you have to add the elements manually. However, inside of QuickStack, that is managed for you. The cells are automatically generated and removed based on the columns and rows that you generate. So you cannot manually add or remove cells. The cells have a second quite interesting property, and that is you can merge them with other cells. So for example, if I click on this cell and hover over the right uh, edge, I see this arrow icon and it says merge cell right. And now this cell has been merged with the other cell and I have one larger cell. And obviously because we merged two cells into one, the total number uh, of cells that we have inside our quick stack has also decreased by one. And you can merge these cells as you wish. For example, I can merge these cells here. I can merge these cells. I can move cells, uh, merge cells vertically like this. Um, I can merge them like this to the left. So you can merge these cells to create your desired areas for your desired layout. You can also do the opposite. If you right click on a cell and click on unmerge cells, um, it reverts to the original configuration. You can also do that for, or I can also do that for this one, this one as well. And now we're back to the starting point. And now you know everything important that you need to build your entire layouts with a uh, quick stack. So let's start by selecting the uh, hero stack, the actual quick stack element. And then I want to remove a column from this so that we have one column, uh, three columns and three rows. And then I just start merging the cells to create my desired layout. 
So as you can see in the final version, I have one large cell here at the top left. So to build this, I just merge these two cells, merge these two cells, merge these two cells with each other. And now I have this one large area here at the top right. Um, I also have this uh, wide area down here. So for that, I merge these two cells. I have this area here. So for that, I merge these two cells. And then I have this small area at the top, top right. And uh, I don't have to merge anything for that. And that is the reason why it's called quick stack because it's super fast to just start with the layout, build your cells. And now we have the basic configuration done and, and can start to fill up these cells with content. So I'm going to select the first cell right here, give it a class of hero uh, underscore cell one. And then I want to add a background image to that cell. I choose a background image, um, this building right here. Then I set the size to cover so that it perf perfectly matches the size of the cell and center it, set the position to center. And now we have the content or the image for the first cell. So as you can see, you can also add classes to the cells and style them based on the class. Let's keep going. I will add a second class here called hero um, underscore cell two. Give this a background as well. In this case, I want to choose a different image. I want to choose this one, set the size to cover and center it as well. Let's keep going. This is hero underscore cell number three. I give it a background image as well. Choose the image, uh, this one, set it to cover and the position to center. And now let's also configure the last cell. I choose this background image right here, set the size to cover and the position to center as well. And let's give this a proper class name. I forgot that, hero cell four, perfect. Next up, I want to put some content into these cells. I do that by opening up the quick finder with control E or command E on Mac. I add a text block to the cell. Now it shows up here. I give it a class of hero underscore text. Let's keep it simple. Give it a color of white. No, not a background color, a font color of white. And then I want to set the size to 2.5 RAM. Now there's one more thing that I did not tell you about the cells yet. Uh, of the quick stack and that is by default their layout is set to display flex so each of these cells are automatically flexbox containers and that is awesome because this way you can control the position of the content just by configuring the flexbox settings you can put it to the bottom you can put it to the top you can put it to the top right you can put it to the bottom left so whatever configuration or whatever position you want for your layout in this case, I'm going to go with the bottom left and also add some spacing here. So I'm going to add a spacing of 1.5 rem to this cell. And now the text has a little bit of distance to the, to the edge. Okay, now I went ahead and quickly configured all of this for the other cells as well. So I added a text to it and made, made, the, made the text a little more visible uh, so that we can continue with the layout. So before we go into the responsive modes, I quickly want to show you some other important property about the quick stack. Under the hood, the Webflow quick stack is just a normal Webflow grid element. Um, and if you click, if you select the quick stack and click on this grid icon up here, you can, you will quickly realize that that is the case um, because you have your columns, you have your rows, and this way you can also manipulate the quick stack as you feel. Um, or as you want. You could, for example, change the width of a column. You can make it narrow. You can make it really wide. Usually I don't do that because I like the simplicity of the quick stack. So let's click on done. I close this again. And now let's take a look at how to edit the quick stack in the responsive mode. So I go to the tablet screen. Here it still looks okay, but I think I'm going to um, change the layout a little bit. So inside of the quick stack, I'm going to take one column away. So I'm going to decrease the columns. And now this generates this new layout for me. 
This looks okay, but I'm quickly going to modify this first cell. So I'm going to set the cell size, change the row span to one, change this row span here to one as well, so that all of the elements take up the, the same height in our quick stack. And what you might notice right here, inside of the responsive breakpoint, you can actually change the column and the row span of the individual cells. You cannot do that in the, in the base breakpoint. In the base breakpoint, the way you would do this, you would merge cells, as I showed you a, a little bit earlier. You would merge cells, and later on in the responsive mode, you only adjust the individual cells so that the, that the layout stays responsive. Also, in the responsive modes, if you select the, the quick stack element, you can see the, the rows are now auto-generated for you. So you can no longer manually add new rows to the quick stack element. You don't have to worry about it because quick stack manages this automatically for you. So that makes it a little bit easier. Okay, let's keep going. So I go to the uh, mobile portrait mode or mobile landscape. I, I always mix these two up. Yeah, mobile landscape. Um, and here, I think the layout looks good. We don't have to change anything here. However, in the mobile portrait mode, it looks quite, um, quite squished together and doesn't look good anymore. So let's make a simple change to the quick stack element as well. I remove a single column and now everything looks really good. I like it. Now there's one last thing that we could uh, take a look at and that is in the desktop breakpoint and also the other breakpoints, uh, we can change the gap between the individual cells. So if I type in, for example, instead of 20 pixels, I type out 20, uh, one rem because I use rem units. You can see the uh, gap changes a little. You can also remove it completely. You can make it super, super wide, but I usually go for something around one rem. But that obviously depends on your individual layout. And you can also, if we go to the spacing tab, you can see the 20 pixels is the predefined padding. But if you were to set this to zero for all, for all of the individual sides, you can see it stretches across the entire screen. I'm going to go with one rem again. So I add one rem to all of the individual sides. And on the smaller breakpoints, especially on the mobile breakpoints, I'm going to change this to 0.5 rem so that we have a little more space. And also for the column gap 0.5 rem and the row gap 0.5 rem as well. I think that looks a lot better. And that is how you can build in a very short amount of time a really cool layout using QuickStack. My recommendation to you is um, that you just play around with QuickStack a little bit. It took me like 20 to 30 minutes to get the idea of it, but once it clicks, it's actually super useful. I didn't expect it. And I think in some cases, I'm going to use it over the normal Webflow grids if the layout doesn't get too complex. If you have a very custom and complex layout, then I think uh, the normal Webflow grid is still super useful. And if you want to learn more about building your Webflow projects much faster, I've recorded an entire video where I gave you 10 tricks to build your Webflow sites up to 10 times faster. So definitely check that out as well. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Mike. Have a nice day. Bye.